Welcome to a shared service of Holden Evening Prayer at Home by musicians and pastors of seven Twin Cities ELCA churches. We extend great gratitude to Marty Haugen and to the Holden Village community for making Holden Evening Prayer available for streaming at this time when we are not able to be physically together. Tonight's service was recorded by pastors and musicians from seven ELCA Twin Cities churches, Mount Carmel of Northeast Minneapolis, First Lutheran of Columbia Heights, Gustavus Adolphus of Northeast Minneapolis, Tree of Life in the North Loop of Minneapolis, Christ Lutheran on Capitol Hill, Grace Lutheran of Northeast Minneapolis, and Bethlehem Lutheran in Midway. As we gather in our homes this evening, you are invited to make yourself comfortable and warm with a cup of hot cocoa or tea and to light a small candle nearby. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world.
Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, a lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. Susan Masters, the interim pastor at Gustavus Adolphus Lutheran Church in Northeast Minneapolis. The assigned gospel reading this Sunday is the so-called road to Emmaus story about the two followers of Jesus walking toward the village of Emmaus. And the text says they were looking sad, presumably because their friend and teacher Jesus was just executed three days ago. But it's interesting that they're still sad because they know that earlier that same day, Mary discovered the empty tomb and encountered Jesus resurrected and alive. But somehow that news hasn't quite taken hold because when they themselves encounter Jesus along the road, they don't recognize him, which gives Jesus a chance to play dumb and ask them what they're talking about. And after they get over their shock that Jesus seems to be the only one who doesn't know what has just happened, namely crucifixion, they then breathlessly answer him. They had pinned all their assumptions about Israel being politically liberated from Rome onto Jesus, only to see them dashed at his death. And with that, they utter what have been called the saddest words in all of Scripture. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. We had hoped, which is to say things didn't go the way we thought they would. One theologian writes that in the original Greek, theirs was a hope that was recurring over and over again. And they had held out hope for so long that it had become ingrained within them. It was all that they knew how to do to just keep hoping against hope that liberation would come and things would get better. And then crucifixion took all that away. And like Mary at the tomb, so completely empty of hope are they that even as resurrection stood right in front of them, they didn't recognize it. That's what grief can do to us. It can distort our vision and numb us to the possibility of hope. The possibility that there can still be life when it seems that death is all around us. This is a deeply challenging time for our world. People are dying all around us. 
financial insecurity is rampant and our leaders can't seem to agree on how best to lead through this time. To make matters worse, there's not a lot of historical precedents to point to to help any of us figure out how to get through this. But I think that there is some good stuff in this gospel story that is worth looking at that might be helpful for us in a time such as this. I think this is a story that reminds us that the joy of resurrection does not guarantee that there will never also be times of sadness and loss and anger. Rather, resurrection assures us that we do not move through those difficult times alone. We go through them with one another, and God goes through them with all of us. This story reminds us that there is space within resurrection to feel the full range of whatever it is we feel when shocking events like crucifixion, like a global pandemic, visit us along the way. The truth of resurrection does not suddenly collapse and cease to be truth just because we feel all of our emotions in a time of crisis. Gratitude for the extra time we're getting with loved ones and also frustration and impatience from all the extra time we're getting with loved ones. Pride and satisfaction at knowing how frugally we can live if we need to. And also fear and anxiety about fruit, how frugally we may have to live when this is all over. Comfort in knowing that God never leaves us even in times of difficulty. And also wondering if God has in fact left us in this time of difficulty. Friends, if you are feeling any of this, first of all, please know that there's nothing in any of it that means you are not still a faithful person. God is big enough to handle the full range of your emotions right now. The good, the bad, the calm, the annoying, all of it. It's all fair game, even in the face of all the hope and new life that resurrection promises to us. And second, if you are struggling in the face of separation from your loved ones or financial un uncertainty or just trying to make sense of everything that's going on in our world right now, please reach out to your pastor. We would want to know so that we can support you and pray for you and assure you as often as you need to hear it that you are not alone your community of faith walks with you. Church, in this Easter season, which this year happens to include a global pandemic, I am bold to remind us all that Jesus walks down the road with us, even when our grief and our anxiety make it hard to recognize him. None of us moves through this time alone. We go forward together with God walking alongside us. I end with those comforting words of the Holden Village Prayer. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God, praise and thanks to you. May God, creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of us.
peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.